Words cannot adequately express to you my gratitude uh, and my gratitude to Father Sean and the entire university community for the invitation to be with you today. I am truly, truly humbled by this honor and I am proud to call myself a member of the Franciscan University class of 2014. I also want to take this occasion to express my appreciation and gratitude for the long, long history of collaboration between EWTN and this university, dating back to the founding of EWTN in 1981. Mother Angelica and Father Michael Scanlon enjoyed a wonderful relationship that led to much, much collaboration that continues to this day. And we and our audiences around the world have been blessed greatly by that collaboration. And I thank you for that wonderful gift to EWTN and to the church. But most importantly, on this joyous occasion of commencement, I wish to express my heartfelt congratulations and prayerful best wishes to you, our graduates, and to your families. This is a milestone moment, and one which you'll remember for the rest of your lives. Although if you don't remember who your commencement speaker was or what he said, that's okay. <laughs> As you've gathered from my bio, God has blessed me with the opportunity to be a part of the work of EWTN and its important mission over the past 23 years. In particular, he blessed me with the opportunity to spend nearly every day with Mother Angelica over what would be the last years of her active involvement in the EWTN apostolate. She is truly a remarkable woman who has a profound impact on my own life. And every day I am awed by the fact that it's now my responsibility to guide and to carry on the mission which God gave to her. So I hope you'll allow me to share with you a few insights inspired by the wit and wisdom of Mother Angelica. You know, this solemn occasion reminds me of the story of Mother Angelica's first commencement address. She was really excited about receiving an honorary degree, her first honorary doctorate, and she, as she often admitted, uh, she barely made it through high school, so it was quite, quite an occasion for her. It was a big, big deal for the little girl from the streets of Canton. She was proud to be wearing her academic regalia and thought it was really, really neat. And just before the outdoor ceremony began, she was visited by a dove. <laughs> and I assure you it was not the descent of the Holy Spirit we're talking about here. Just before the procession was to begin, the nun who was with her uh, mentioned that Mother had a bit of a problem, and so the two nuns scurried off to clean up Mother's regalia. And unfortunately, uh, their efforts only made the situation worse. And so Mother delivered her first commencement address with a very soggy and very bird-stained veil. So I was happy to see today that this commencement was being held indoors, lest I have the opportunity to repeat that experience of Mother Angelica. Mother's founding of EWTN is a wonderful story of faith and trust in God's providence. After all, Mother Angelica started EWTN a little more than 30 years ago in her monastery garage with only $200 in the bank, a small group of poor Claire nuns with no media experience, and a few sheep and goats who were wandering around the property in Irondale, Alabama. Now, I suspect that uh, from the business graduates and the business faculty among us that uh, that would not be seen as uh, the perfect model for success, certainly not in any business school. But from those humble beginnings, that network today is a television, radio, and media organization reaching hundreds of millions of homes across the world 24 hours a day in multiple languages using every available media platform. 
All of us are well aware of the difficulties that our increasingly secular society presents to Catholics, especially faithful Catholics, who wish to exercise our God-given religious freedom and to live out our faith in the public square. During your time here at Franciscan, you've been blessed with the opportunity to live and to learn more about the Catholic faith, faith the most important thing which we possess. As a Catholic institution, Franciscan University makes a lifelong contribution to her students, particularly as it relates to the formation of conscience of her graduates. After all, it is the formation of conscience that constitutes the true and ultimate goal of Catholic higher education. A truly Catholic education aims to provide the knowledge and understanding to embrace and to live out our God-given vocation in life. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI has said that young people, quote, desire to meet Christ and be drawn by the very power of the gospel to lead a new life, characterized by all that is beautiful, good, and true. A life of Christian witness, nurtured and strengthened by and within the church. Young people today, and you graduates are a testament to this, do not want mere technical knowledge. Young people do not simply want a job. Dear graduates, I hope that your goal as you conclude your college years today is to live and pursue a poetic life, a life which is timeless, a life which is good and beautiful, a life which is true and which is authentically Catholic. This is why you came to Franciscan University of Steubenville, a place where every aspect of the university's life is focused on being authentically Catholic. I also must acknowledge in a special way the vibrant culture of vocational discernment fostered here in Steubenville. A remarkable number of the graduates of this university have responded with vocations to the priesthood and to the consecrated life. This is a special gift both to the individuals and to the church. Dear graduates, as you leave Franciscan, some of you have immediate plans for the future. Some of you may have what might be called conditional plans. And some of you might not have a clue what you're doing beyond loading up the car this afternoon when the day is over. Whichever those categories you might be in, I want to take this opportunity to encourage you to think less of what our secular society would call a career, and perhaps to rephrase or reword the question to consider. Ask yourselves this question. What does God want? What is the mission which God has given to me? After all, it's not about us. It's about God. Mother Angelica was 58 years old and in terrible health when she founded EWTN. She had a high school education and had been a cloistered nun her whole life. She knew nothing about television or media. Everyone thought she was crazy, and they told her so. So why take on this important work, this impossible task? She took on the work because she was called by God to do it. It wasn't her idea, it was his, and she embraced it. On this score, she once reflected, once I get an inspiration, I never question it. I know myself, and I believe if God wants it, he has his plan. Franciscan virtue is to follow the providence of God, and God's providence goes as far as you go. Now that's the scary thing about it. If you don't go, he won't go. Pope Emeritus Benedict has also reminded us that we are not some casual and meaningless product of evolution. Each of us is the result of a thought of God. Each of us is willed, each of us is loved, each of us is necessary. 
mother would often teach that our lives ought to be a continual and daily prayer and offering to God, our loving Father. God is love, and we know that Christ invites us to surrender our hearts to him and to receive from him the inspiration and the courage to love as he loves, purely and selflessly. St. Therese of Lisieux discovered her vocation, which she expressed with the words, my vocation is love. Dear graduates, this is our common vocation. All of us have that same vocation as St. Therese. Our vocation as human beings is to love. To live that life which is poetic, good, and beautiful, we must surrender our hearts to God and he will show us our path through the everyday miracles that constitute daily life. Mother used to say, if you're following God, he never shows you the end. It's always a walk of faith. In reflecting on the beautiful life still being lived by Mother Angelica, I can recall countless moments of grace when Mother Angelica, a poor Claire Franciscan, responded by surrendering her heart to God and following the example of St. Francis and St. Clair. The Mother Angelica endured great struggles and difficulties in founding EWTN. She bore all out of love for God. To this day, her quiet suffering still gives meaning to her life, now lived within the confines of a bed within her monastery in Alabama. Mother Angelica truly lived and continues to live in accordance with God's will. Her life was and is born out of prayer and continual communication with God. Most men, she wrote, work for degrees and titles after their names. We work for one before our names, saint. It's much more difficult degree to obtain. It takes a lifetime. The secular notion that our work life or our career is separate from our spiritual life is completely foreign to Mother Angelica, and it's foreign to our Catholic faith. This is why a Catholic university prepares students not merely for a career, but for fullness of life both here and in eternity. Graduates, whatever your passion is, Whatever you do in the journey ahead, the church tells us it must begin from and end in Christ Jesus. This is something Mother taught me and that she teaches us all by her own example. She would remind us everything starts with one person. I don't care if you're five or 105. God from all eternity chose you to be where you are at this time in history to change the world. We can all change the world in varying degrees, but this will not mean that the world will necessarily acknowledge what we do or thank you or care or think that what you contribute to your family and to the church is anything meaningful or worthy of praise. But what the world thinks is not our concern. The important thing, as Mother Angelica's life and the lives of so many of the saints have shown us, is to be faithful and to persevere. Mother wrote, God does not look at numbers or quantities. He looks at souls and individuals. You have been created by God and know Jesus for one reason, to witness to faith and hope and love before an unbelieving world, even if you influence only one person in your whole life. My dear graduates, if you desire a beautiful life, a life full of meaning, we know we must look to Christ, who ought to be the focus of our life. Mother used to say, the world is never going to see the good news by reading the good book because they won't read it. They're only going to see it when you live it. The life and words of Mother Angelica encourage us not to fear, but to embrace God's will for us, even if it means suffering. Mother Angelica's life has been a life of faith, 
Her prayer life and obedience to God are worthy of our imitation. The growth of EWTN is the fruit of her cooperation with God's grace. Our challenge is to follow Jesus as he leads us to do what Christ asks of us. Let me close with this one last reflection from Mother. No matter how successful one is or how famous, there comes a time when he passes on. He's like a ship going across the ocean. The ship makes a little ripple, and when it has passed, the ocean closes in. And when it is passed, well, isn't that what life is all about? Each of us passing through. We've lost sight of this world being the pilgrimage. It's a journey. My dear graduates of the Franciscan University of Steubenville class of 2014, as you begin your journey, despite what is customary on such occasions, I do not wish you luck or good fortune. I wish you something greater. I wish you heaven. I pray with the entire Franciscan University family that our blessed mother and St. Francis, your patron, may accompany each of you on your pilgrimage through this life to the place prepared for you by Christ in the next. Thank you. May God bless you.